What is going on everybody? Hitmonchan and you're back again with another Pokemon trading card game online deck tech. Today we're taking a look at Incineroar EX on PTCG Live and this is like one of the coolest cards I think that is really, you know, hasn't been getting a lot of love out of Temporal Forces. Its hustle play ability is really cool, kind of like Radiant Charizard, except with bench Pokemon. Tax used by this Pokemon cost a colorless energy less for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon in play. So that means that if they have four bench Pokemon, you can use its Blaze Blast attack, which does 240 damage plus a burn for a single energy which is really, really strong. And this kind of feels like the new Charizard or a different way to play Charizard or even a more versatile Charizard because of two of the really cool combos you can do with this deck. One of them with the Cat from Silver Tempest with Gritty Claws, does 40 damage. And if you're gonna be one hit KO'd, you know, during your next turn, you will survive on 10 HP, which then means you can use Reprisal, which does 20 damage times the amount of damage counters on this Pokemon to knock anything out in the whole game. Incineroar is a monstrous, Pokemon with 320 HP, and you can use these attacks with Incineroar thanks to the brand new Relicanth that has Memory Dive, which will let you use your evolved Pokemon, use attacks of their previous evolutions, which is why I think this deck has a lot of versatility. It's got the be some of the benefits of Charizard, it's with you know high damage, high HP, and you can even extend that damage a little bit further with something like the Defiance Band that we have in here. Um, and I, I don't know, I really like this deck. It's a lot more fun to play than Charizard in my opinion. Uh, we're rocking it with TM Evolution and the Bibarel Engine. We're playing a 3-3 line of Bibarel in here. Anything else cool is that, you know, we're playing the TM Evos, like I said. Buddy Buddy Poffin's really good. We got Counter Catchers, 3 Boss. We got a lot of cool stuff in here. We're also playing one copy of Mela to help us accelerate more fire energy if our opponent decides to play it a little bit safe and not bench a lot of Pokemon. And our ace spec of choice in this deck is actually Neo Upper Energy, which I think is really good because it will allow you to use any of the previous evolutions, you know, Reprisal or um, Gritty Claws, for a single attachment because they both cost two fire energy and Incineroar only reduces the attack cost of colorless energy attacks. So I think that this deck, it kind of has all the tools it needs to succeed. It's a lot of fun to play. I'm very, very excited to show it off. So we're just gonna hop into some games, get some dubs with Incineroar EX. Just wanted to give a quick thank you to the lovely sponsors of the Hitmon Channing channel. If you need codes, you know where to go. Head over to ptcglstore.com and use code Hitmon to get 5% off your order. And be sure to check out Pokemon.gg, the best Pokemon card tracker and deck builder there is. You can track your entire collection and see its value, build decks quickly and easily, create custom wish lists, and so much more. Join Pokemon.gg by clicking the link below and use code Hitmon to get $5 off a pro membership. These are some great products for some great prices. Thank you to my sponsors for supporting the channel and thanks to you for supporting me too and now let's get right back into the video we get to call the coin flip here tails never fails is what i always say so we're gonna hop into the game we're gonna flip tails and we're gonna choose to go second over here um we do not want to be going first we're gonna hopefully be able to get that tm evo play off that is kind of the dream start with an arvin in hand you know kind of get going from there um luminion is going to be our savior we are going to be able to get the tm evo play um, but at what cost, you know what I mean? I'm not sure how much I like using Neo Upper Energy to do that. Hmm, this is interesting. This is really interesting. Well, I'll lead, I'll lead Litten and we'll see what happens here. See what happens. If we top deck the energy, great. If not, yeah, this, this, see, this is the thing that is a little bit sketchy. It is gonna be a Charizard deck. So if they get a really good setup, like I don't wanna waste this Neo Upper Energy on the Litten. Um, so I might as well lead it. They just got the double Charmander out, which is good for us. We get Iono, which could also be beneficial. We're definitely gonna get Litten and Bidoof here. I don't think there's a question about that. And then we don't have to put Luminion into play. If we do that, we just got to find ourselves Team Evo. We don't need to waste the Neo Upper. I'm kind of a bigger fan of that, to be completely honest with you. Just go for the Iono play, get some more fresh cards going over here. Even this is fine. I'm really okay with this hand because now I can just get my second Bidoof. I don't even want to attach anything here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pass. This Litten gets knocked out. Okay, that sucks. If it doesn't, you know, they're going to need to bench a Pidgey at some point. They're going to need to bench something else at some point so they can get set up. There's their Pidgey. Um, there's the Charmander. So now we can just one hit KO if we find that Neo upper. They do have Rare Candy Charizard in hand though, which is a little bit annoying. Um, and they're going to be able to knock this Litten out, which is the precise reason I did not want to um, go ahead and waste the Neo Upper energy. Now we actually have a chance to try and find it and put some damage onto this Charizard in return. So we'll see what exactly they do 
they're gonna obviously attack with this Charizard here, and um, it might just be a Burning Darkness from them. That doesn't really surprise me too much. Uh, we can Iono them, but I think I'd actually rather just nest Stash and get some more cards to the bottom. I would like to get another um, Litten into play this turn, and we have Incineroar, so if we got a Rare Candy, we would be swinging for the fences here, but I think just a nest Stash is probably better. No need to waste a Defiance Band because we can find it off of the Arvin. Neo Upper Energy is exactly what we want. Rare Candy Incineroar or Incineroar Arvin. Two pieces. We just need the two pieces. We got ourselves the Bibarel here. And now I think a Heavy Ball. Nothing in there. Four Seal Stones prized. Both are switching options prized. Little bit sketchy over here. But I'm thinking, yeah, definitely the best. We just Ultra Ball. We get our Incineroar. And yeah, we have three... For five outs, five outs, 38 cards. Hopefully, we get there. And we get there, thankfully, with the Arvin. I was really scared, to be honest, that we wouldn't have hit this. Um, the Fine Span, I'll also grab off of this as well. No need to get another Litten into play this turn. Um, there's really no risk to us at this point. Um, and now we can hit back into them with Blaze Blast. Blaze Blast with a 270. We keep the burn on for a couple turns they will get knocked out but we're not going to rely on that you know there's really no point next turn is going to be tough we're going to really need to get double litten down that should be the plan they've got zero way to knock this incinerar out another option we can uh explore next turn because we have nest stash we can just kind of cycle through the deck is we want to get a buddy buddy to get double litten we also could get a boss and what boss will let us do really really cool because we're behind is boss will let us bring this pidgeot ex up if they choose to do it knock it out with reprisal if we can get a relic hand down or even just blaze bomb is enough to get rid of this pidgeot ex because of the um the defiance band on our incinerar now there's always the possibility they get rid of that and if that's the case uh things are going to be a little more difficult they're just getting one more Charmander out. I don't know what kind of things they'll have in their hand. A Nest Ball coming down, probably to grab a Rotom so they can force Seal Stone would be my guess. But NTV is a fascinating card. Um, that, being their four Seal Stone user, is very good for us because we can just knock it out. Um, with our Incineroar, it can't knock us out. That's always really good. They're just going to Burning Darkness and hit into this Incineroar on the bench here, which is, you know, concerning to say the least. But we're going to start off with a Nest Dash. Nestash will allow us to um, get some more Pokemon in play. An Arvin for a Buddy Buddy. Buddy Buddy itself. Arvin is really good. We'll just use the Arvin. Grab Buddy Buddy TM Evo. Just thin our deck down a little bit. We're one Litten down, which means we can Buddy Buddy for two of them. Um, now next turn again, we're going to be a little bit behind because we're going to need to get a Rare Candy Incineroar again. If they even get the Rare Candy Charizard, that is. Um... But here, yeah, this is completely fine. This is a fine hand. I don't really have any reservations about it. We'll attach to the Litten. We'll even put the TM Evo on it. And we'll draw some more cards. No need to Ultra Ball just yet. We have Rear Candy, which is good for next turn. And we'll just Blaze Blast. Get rid of this Charizard. And um, go ahead to prize cards. Now, like I said, if, whenever they knock something out, it's not the time to necessarily use Relicanth just yet. We can, um, we can wait. They're going to lead the Entei, hoping to kind of make something happen here, I think. Um, or even just not let any of their po bench Pokemon... Or sorry, I'm kind of... Conf I'm getting a little bit confused. They're definitely leading the Entei just to Fleet-Footed. I think they need to... They're trying to get into the game more so than they are um, worried about us, like, overtaking them, if that makes sense. So here comes the Ultra Ball. I have a feeling it's a Rare Candy Pidgeot. Iron Moth is a crazy tech. That's interesting as a single prize attacker. Here comes Luminion Fishy Fishy, which will be able to get put down and give them an Arvin, which will then give them a um, Forest Seal Stone. And from here, we have the perfect board. Double, triple Incineroar, essentially. Um, double the Barrel and Skovit. That's what you want to get here. Um, the reason that Incineroar doesn't work too well with things like the um, Pidgeot Engine, for example, is that like you need a lot of resources to make that happen and charizard powers itself up incineroar doesn't power itself up so it gets a lot harder to um kind of chain that combo turn two but going for a slower build you know tm evolution if you get to use it if not you just have a bunch of items and a bunch of pokemon you can play you have full access to buddy buddy poffin now here they can swing with this entei v 
uh, if they get a Charizard into play, which they can do. They can use four Seal Stone. They can use that Pidgeot EX's quick search ability to put that NTV and make it an attacking threat. But then in that case, we just knock it out in return with our good pal Litten. We save our, uh, we evolve our last one if possible. Um, no Iono, so we just have the Incineroar in hand, which is really, really nice. And we'll see what they decide to kind of do. There's that rare candy. There's that Charizard. It's going to be, you know, a two for one deal kind of thing. They're going to put two on the Entei, one on the Charizard on the bench. And they're going to swing with this Entei for knockout. We knock out this Entei. This Charizard shouldn't be able. I don't think it can return KO us unless they're playing like Max Belt. And then if that's the case, we just go in with our last, um, we go in with our last uh, Incineroar. And then we just smack a Charizard twice or we boss a Luminion and we win the game. So options, 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 options are always good. Again, they're ever so slightly ahead here. So uh, we could use Counter Catcher, but we'll save that for a rainy day. Right now, we don't really... Oh, rainy day meaning, meaning it's in the discard pile. We don't really need it right now. And the Bidoof is the perfect top deck because it will let us just Ultra Ball get another Incineroar. We want to get this Cat down. That is a main priority of mine this turn. So we can Rare Candy into the Litten here. And how many Ultra Balls? I used two Ultra Ball. I could Arvin for the Team Evo and the Ultra Ball get rid of like Relicanth and stuff i'm not too sure if i'm a huge fan of that idea i think i'd rather just go for the nest stash and try and draw into it um or just get a different set of cards to use with arvin tm evo that's great you can get that but barrel you, you you earned it you deserve it you deserve it um and we do get the arvin again so the arvin i will more than happily take and it can get rid of i think the we can set the fire energy up we got only the neo upper in the discard pile Nah, I'm fine with getting rid of that. The Toracat itself is a lot more important here. And we have the barrel, so we can just draw into another one. Um, so you can see the real power of this when you just get there. You just start cycling your guys. We get another energy, which is really, really good. And now we can just Blaze Blast for the knockout on this Entei V. What can Entei do? Nothing. Entei can't do anything. Now, even if our opponent hits into this Incineroar with Charizard, you know, we've taken four prize cards, 120, it's 300 damage they're going to be doing here. Um... If they hit into us, we just knock them out with reprisal. If they don't hit it, if they, you know, get the max belt energy, they need a lot still to get a KO here. If they're able to get it, then we're able to just boss up that Luminion on the bench and say bye-bye. See you later, Luminion. It was nice knowing you. Uh, they're putting all of those fire energy back into the deck here, and that is going to enable them to search one out with Quick Search. But again, if they don't have the KO here, we literally just need to find a fire energy and then we can KO with reprisal or we just boss up. We have the Luminion. That's like the boring route. We'll bo we boss Luminion and just KO it. I don't want to do that. I want to do the fun route with reprisal. Um, but we'll see what exactly we can do. They're going to Iono us, which is arguably even better for our hand than having the hand that we did. Um, it does mean we have to work to find balls, but we have three in the deck. We could also guarantee the win with Crypto Maniacs or Cypher Maniacs Code Breaking. Uh, being in our hand right now. So that's also really good uh, as an option to see what we can have happen. The possibilities are endless. The possibilities are literally endless here. There's a quick search. So they might be opting to try and go for a Radiant Charizard play, stop us from having the win uh, with a boss on Luminion. They could bench a Pokemon and collapse it away, which is why I'm being a little bit cautious here with my plays. Um, and we'll see what exactly they do. This quick search will be revealed to us in a moment's time. It might just be a fire energy, but it's going to be a Charmeleon. They could actually try and take this turn a little more passively. That is an option as well. They're going to choose a new active Pokemon. It's going to be the Charmander. And yeah, they're going to be passing it on over to us. So we can hopefully get the game uh, winning win here, if that makes sense. Uh, I do want to go for the Ultra Ball. Thinning is winning. We'll grab this other Incineroar. There's no need to keep it in the deck. And now we can just start Industrious Incisoring. We have a really high chance of hitting the boss here. Um, we just with through thinning alone. Not going to put the Luminion on there. Relicanth, I think, can go down there. Um, but actually, no. I want to save that bench spot for Luminion, to be completely honest with you. I think that that's actually a lot more beneficial. Because we can just draw into the Luminion, and that's another out for us to have we'll industrious incisors one more time do we get there we should have it we do have the boss's orders which will bring this little fishy into the active and boom blaze blast for the knockout taking the final two prizes of the game against charizard ex with incineroar 
our opponent has called the coin flip here. It's landed on heads, so they're going to get to choose whether or not they want to go first or second. Hopefully they let us go second. We get a TM Evo play up. That's kind of my, that's the dream scenario with this deck. You want to get that TM Evo. You want to get all of that uh, juicy, juicy setup going. This Luminion is going to help us out quite a bit. We'll lead with the Linton and we will see what exactly is going to be done here. It is going to be a Dunspar stack. Could be Roaring Moon, the Dunsparce. Could be, I saw a really interesting Charizard deck earlier today. This is Roaring Moon, but the Charizard one was the Charizard Pidgeot the Barrelist. Excuse me, that Tord played to his EUIC victory. But instead of the Babarel, I actually had the Dunsparce, which I really liked because it's not really a liability that can get trapped in the active spot. And you just recycle it whenever you need it. I think that was a really cool, interesting way. And I might play the Dunsparce if I, uh, what's it called? If I were to build that Charizard variant, I think maybe the Dunsparce would be the one that I would go with um, just because I think it's really, really cool. Now they're getting a good setup unbeknownst to what the heck we're gonna throw at them here no energies in play is really good for us neo upper is good for later we'll start off with this nest ball here nest ball will let us get a search through the deck we want to get you know double lit and double the barrel that's kind of our motto here um and we can go grab ourselves we have the tm evo we're good we got our arvins we got everything we need luminion will be a little clutch member of our um of our deck here getting arvin right off the top ultra ball will be good for the later parts of the video but we can get another buddy buddy or a buddy buddy and the tm evo here and this buddy buddy will let us just get a double bidoof on the bench now we put a swove it down and we're good to go nothing to complain about we have the tm evo we have the energy attachment and let's just go for the tm evolution we're gonna want to get the litten and the barrel down or i should say the torah cat and the barrel down so now we have neo upper if they don't bench any more pokemon um we just neo upper lead this Torah cat after they knock out this litten and boom bob's your uncle you're gone my friend so this has been pretty solid we also have other ways to get our, our Litten out of the active we have a switch so if we need to find that we absolutely can um but we'll see what is done here they're starting off with raiding greninja um that's you know an energy they got a six card hand they got to have something they could do with this hand i'm thinking they're more weighing their options if they want to grab themselves a dunspar start drawing explorers guidance i think they're opting to play a little bit safer here uh, we are more setup based so they can kind of afford to get away with that um you know another option that we do have here though is we actually try like we try and go very far for the ultra ball rare candy route um and actually get ourselves a uh our, make our active Pokemon um, Incineroar EX. I'm getting confused with all these fire cat names, you know. Uh, they're starting to prepare their Roaring Moon on the bench. They got to find a Dark Patch if they want to get an attack off this turn. If they don't, that means we're just going to be able to go ahead, evolve straight up, and just begin to abuse Reprisal over and over again with Neo Upper Energy. Um, Gritty Claws isn't super helpful in this matchup we actually kind of want to save our Torah cat to respond to roaring moons using frenzied gouging um so that's another like key line to keep in mind we do want to put radiant charizard into play at some point as well um sucks we have to have lumini on here this deck like if you're listening to me now this deck definitely needs a collapse stadium 100 percent you need a collapse stadium in this deck instead probably of magma basin both have their uses but i think being able to get lumini on out of play so much better um than getting that single fire energy back in they're just going to pass it on over to us now hopefully we can get a nice little knockout here defiance band is coming through which isn't really going to be that big of a uh, it could be no 270 snow it's not that big of a deal so we will get rid of that and i'm debating what the best play is here we'll get the barrel just so we can get a little double barrel line going if we find four seal stone even better um i don't want to commit anything just yet i want to just get that guy back in there that radiant charizard now we'll see what we draw into here it's a jet energy and it's an incineroar so the jet energy will uh what's it called it'll let us hit right because that's three yeah okay so it'll let us hit but we can't bring this guy up and do i want to you know what uh so difficult so so difficult to decide the best course of action here We'll evolve on the bench, and I think we'll probably attach Neo Upper to the bench. Now we can Industrious Incisors, maybe we find Arvin for Switch. We don't, we find another Bidoof, we also find a boss, and I actually, 
I'm not, I'm not opposed to using the boss here. Um, I don't want to put this other Bidoof down, but I think we can start off... Uh, it's so tough to decide. Nah, you know what? This is fine. We'll end the turn here. Um, my debate was, do I put this other Bidoof down? I have my third barrel in my hand, but we would rather save that spot for Squilvip, save that spot for another Litten, save that spot for Radiant Charizard if we need to drop it down. Lots of reasons we want to save that uh, bench spot here. Here comes the Roaring Moon. They have a Sada, so they're probably going to go all in on this Roaring Moon, which can be a little bit scary for us. Um, but it looks like, yeah, I can expect them to prioritize Baby Roaring Moon here as their attacker. They definitely have their Dunsparces in play. They've churned through a lot of their deck. Um, they don't have a lot of Dark Energy in the discard pile. They need like an Attach and a Dark Patch to use Active Roaring Moon, as well as the Prime Catcher. So they still need a lot. They've already drawn with Sada. Um, we'll see what they do. Here comes the Concealed Cards. And yeah, like if we just got this Incineroar into play, could be a little bit of a challenge to kind of um, refuel our board. If that makes sense, but I don't, I don't really see them t being able to take advantage of that Incineroar on the bench. Um, I can definitely see them trying to get this Luminion out of play after. That is going to be a uh, challenge, I think for sure. But they're going to choose the new active, which is going to very likely be their baby Roaring Moon, and that Roaring Moon is going to um, go ahead and Vengeance Fletching us, us for sure. Um, and something good here is we can literally just boss this Roaring Moon on the bench and KO it um because we have boss in our hand that i do want to do because that way we are going to be able to hurt them a lot more we have enough to do the blaze blast here heavy ball is really good because heavy ball can get us another litten which is exactly what we need counter catcher is prized so no counter catcher play will be happening here um we could go for the mela but the mela is better served later on i think just a boss on this roaring moon ex is fine and I don't know if I want to quite do this. Hopefully we can find an Ultra Ball thin our hand down. Radiant Charizard's decent to have, but yeah, right now I'm not super keen on it. Could put this Bidoof down, which might not be the worst idea, because I don't really see a world in which we're going to need to do anything more than Blaze Blast in this matchup. So we'll put the Bidoof down right now, just to get to draw one more card. Maybe it's something that we can use. Another boss is fine. Um, and we just Blaze Blast, do 240 here. We get a little bit ahead on our prize cards. Yeah, like, it's a bit of a risky play to go for that, but I don't see them preparing another Roaring Moon in a single turn. I think it's kind of unlikely. Um, they've given the resources that they've given up, and they got two Roaring Moon EX in the discard pile. I think this deck runs, like, three max, and we're going to find out right now if it does. Um, there's also a chance that they have it prized, but no, there's the other Roaring Moon EX, so they're going to get that prepped, get that ready. They could get it powered up, but if they don't get it powered up, we're going to be able to just boss it up. Third thing is that we can actually respond... What's it called? We'll be able to respond with our Incineroar. That's kind of our plan here. We have Mela. If they bring this up into the active to just use Incineroar right away. Um, there's the Dunsparce. They're really going to extend, I think, for this Roaring Moon EX knockout here. Which, you know, good for them. That's why I would like to have a Cat in play at this point. But we, that means we have our Rare Candies left in the deck. We have, I think, two Arvins still left in the deck. So we should be able to get there. They just need to get an Attach for turn to be able to go for their Frenzied Gouging play. Um, but you know, we'll just out trade them at that point. We have Buddy Buddy Poffin as well, and they have an insane amount of draw power on board. They need their attachment for turn, um, in order to get there. I don't know if this deck runs for Dark Patch, I'm expecting it to, and I'm kind of okay with this as well. We'll let them accumulate this massive hand they don't know what to do with, and from there, we will literally just go through and be like, eh, no, sir, you, my friend, are going to be in trouble. Something else that we can explore is we can actually respond with Radiant Charizard if they knock this Incineroar out. They'll take two prizes and we can just go for a Mela plus Jet Energy um, attachment, right, to, ke to KO with this Radiant Charizard. Yeah, so that's an option too. They are down this two Ancient Booster Energy Capsules on the board. So I'm fine with that if they don't, as long as they don't put a, like a, one of their third ones on this Roaring Moon EX. That's what I don't want to happen, but they still got to find a way to power it up, right? So you give and you take kind of thing. I don't, I believe they haven't retreated yet, so that's fine for us as well. And we'll see what they decide to do here. Um, our Incineroar is a big beast, and if they take the risk of going for a Frenzied Gouging, we can respond with Radiant Charizard. Yeah, it doesn't even matter if they get the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. We'll still respond with Radiant Charizard. We have a Litten on the bench, and we'll be fine. They're going to really draw one more time. Um, and that is going to allow them to 
putting the stun sparse up. They need to find that energy. They still haven't found their energy attachment. Again, they got five energy on board. It might, not the most unrealistic thing, but there is the energy. So they've got their moon powered up. We'll see what exactly they're able to walk away with right now. And we can set up our Radiant Charizard. And if, if that's one of those things I was talking about in my Turbo Hands video with setting up the baby Maridon, if they opt to not deal with it, you're going to have a bad time. You know, we just need to take three knockouts to win. After this, they need to take... Actually, I don't know what they need to take. Oh, they're going to counter catcher. That's interesting for sure. That's an interesting play. I didn't know this deck played counter catcher. Okay. So now this is going to change our game plan a little bit. Definitely leading Incineroar. No doubt about that. Um, we want to put this Radiant Zard down for sure. And we definitely want to go for the Ultra Ball here. Yeah, like Radiant Zard on the bench. Jet Energy is good to keep. We could also Mela this turn. I think Mela is not like a bad play. But we want to put this... This is so tough. Because it's like we can lead Radiant Zard, hit into this Roaring Moon, and then they can just return knock it out. I think it's better just to have the Incineroar up and online. And then in that case, we just got to take one more. Okay, I have my game plan here. I think I know exactly what I want to do. Uh, Jet Energy is not super needed right now. We want to get this Tauracat in play. I know exactly the route that I want to take here. We'll do this. We'll attach here. We'll go for Barrel first, and then we'll go for a Mela. Um, again, I can... Ultra Ball, I don't think I'll need more than one more boss this game. I'm just going incredibly, like, you know, huge thinning. And the reason I'm doing so is because I want to find Iono here. I really wanted to hit this Iono. Um, I don't want them to boss through this Incineroar if they try to. I don't want them to do it. Um, I want them to go through two Incineroars. That's essentially my game plan here. I have a switch, but that's fine. We'll just Blaze Blast 240 here. They don't get affected by burn. Um, that's another thing. You know, this Ancient Booster Energy Capsule is tough because if they try and hit us with the... Um, if they try and hit us with that Frenzied Gouging play, we can vacuum that Ancient Booster Capsule away and get rid of it there. So yeah, responding with a one prize there actually would have been the worst case scenario because then they can just frenzy gouging for game. So by putting them in a position where they're gonna need to um, go through two Incineroars, we can maximize our chance of winning this game. Here's an Explorer's Guidance. They're gonna churn through their deck a lot more. We have our Iono still. So that's what I would like to use. I'd like to utilize that Iono. Nest Ball, get myself that Squovit. Um, and they can put the Dunsparce in play. We just kind of have to eliminate them from finding a boss's orders here um for the end game they're gonna start powering their moons up getting greninja ready to go there's an earthen vessel which is gonna just help them thin 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 through their deck so much more a dark patch is gonna allow them to set more pokemon up um and yeah i'm really expecting them to like hit us with a frenzied gouging here i do think we still have our counter catcher prize though for this matchup so yeah here's the frenzied gouging now the optimal play is to boss us to dunsparce boss KO with Incineroar. That's the optimal play here. Um, and then that makes their life a lot harder. We get two prizes, they get two prizes. We get the Arvin. We don't necessarily have the like exact way to do what we want to do in hand here, but we definitely want to get, get this to Dunsparce out of here if that's possible. So we have Rare Candy, which is fine. We'll Nest Ball. We're definitely going to grab Squovit. We have boss. Yeah, no counter catcher. So it's not like we can Iono counter catcher, but we want a boss for sure. So Squovit's going to come down, and we're really just going to go all into this Incineroar here. It's We need to do it. We don't have the option. You can have a four Seal Stone Squovit. I don't mind. Um, now we get to draw five cards. Again, we should hit what we're looking for here. Not with a hand like that, though. Um, that's a little bit of an issue. We can do this. Hopefully, we find that Ultra Ball. We don't. We find Iono. Iono could be good. It should guarantee us the Incineroar. Then that way, they just need to... They can't find it. Yeah, we'll go for the Iono. Alternatively, Gritty Claws can save us if we still miss. So that's fine. We do have the Incineroar here. So that's A-OK -okay with me. We just go into the Incineroar. Um, and then hit into them. And then it comes down to do they find the boss's orders, yes or no, right? Uh, we just Blaze Blast them over here. Hit them really hard. And we got to see what they respond with, you know? 
It's going to be really tough. They have probably got a boss or two left in the deck still. It's just the it's literally just the Dunsparce draw. I doubt they have any energies left they can use. But we'll see if the, we I just I unload them right into it. They get Trekking Shoes, which they're going to keep, which makes me think that that's just the boss's orders. They need to run away draw here, though, in order to be able to pull this off. They're going to have to full commit. Really tight game, really close game here. I'm, I'm, I'm a, little, uh, a little scared. I'm a little scared. There's the runaway draw. Fingers crossed they don't have it. Again, they're leading this Roaring Moon either way because they just lose, I think. Oh, they lean the Greninja. Maybe they don't have it. There's the Sada. So no boss. They're going to need to find the Prime Catcher. Maybe they don't have it. Oh, this is intense. They found the Prime Catcher. No! They found the Prime Catcher. Oh, man. There's the Vengeance Fletching, Fletching for the KO here. Good game for my opponent. Very close game. Very tight back and forth. We weren't able to get just there in the end. But I think still a really good showing of the deck and what it can do. Our opponent is calling the coin flip here. Tails never fails, as I always say, and it's going to be heads. So our opponent will get to choose if they want to go first or second here. I mean, our deck obviously prefers to go second, but we are playing some of these rare candies in here. Um, so we could evolve and get a turn to Incineroar if we had to go first, but we prefer to take it slow, right? Like we're not really in a huge rush. This is a pretty decent hand for going second. Uh, I do think I want to probably lead with the Relicanth right now. Um, and not give too much of a hint as to what we're playing. Our opponent's playing some sort of ancient deck, which is really good for us because eventually our uh, Litten is just gonna not, or I should say our Incineroar will just not be able to get knocked out. They might go for an attached pass here though, which would be pretty solid for us. Um, and then yeah, if that's the case, I almost don't want to Iono them here, but we get a rare candy, which is pretty good. Honestly, See, this is tough because they don't have any benched Pokemon. I almost want them to get a little bit more of a board established. But for now, I think I'll do this. I think I will Iono them. Maybe they have Sada's or Explorer's Guidance in the hand. I think our setup's a little more important. One Buddy Buddy Poffin kind of completes that. We don't have anything too crazy here. But I think that the best call is definitely to Nest Ball. Get a Litten. Another Litten down. We only have one Torcat actually. So we'll just grab another Bidoof. Because yeah, because then Arvin can just nab us our... Um, you know, Arvin can get us our um, Ultra Ball to get our Evolution Pokemon. But we'll just go for a TM Evolution on here. And it's a little bit risky going for a Litten because literally if they just attach plus boss, they can knock this Litten out. But we still have some more time to kind of get things established here. Um, so we'll see what happens. Again, it's also in their best interest to actually knock this Relicanth out if they get the chance because they're going to want to get that off the board. But there's a Dunsparce coming down, so it's not Ancient Box. It actually seems to be Roaring Moon, which is even better for us because we can return KO with the likes of Toracat um, and Gritty Claws. And if they use Roaring Moon EX, for example, to take a knockout on us and leave them with 30 HP remaining, we can use um, a bunch of our different Pokemon, even Bidoof Bibarel, um, we, if we get lucky, we can hit with them. There's a lot of options for our deck here, so I'm not super uh, concerned. They're gonna grab the, the Dunsparce, just go for an attack here, and they do have the boss! No way, they just have the boss! Oh my gosh, that is unfortunate. That really sucks. <laughs> they just had it in hand. Okay, that's fine. See, we can play it a little bit slower here. We are a single prize deck, um, and like I said, it's not the end of the world. We'll go for Arvin, get Buddy Buddy, we get another TM Evo. Now we can't go for a, um, actually maybe, no, we don't have Ultra Ball. We can't really do too much craziness here because we gotta get double Litten down. So we'll grab both of these Littens here. We're not gonna be able to TM Evo them necessarily, but I think just getting these out of the hand, we'll attach this here, put the Defiance Band down, draw a little bit more. I want to spread out our resources a little bit. Another Buddy Buddy Poffin's really good because we can use that to grab double Bidoof or even Bidoof and Squobit is pretty good. Um, and we can Team Evo them or Triple Bidoof could be good, but no, let's just do this. Well, So this is kind of like our ideal board setup over here. And I almost don't even want to like go for the Team Evo. I want to keep this Drelicanth in play, but we don't need it very like right now. Let's just go and start with a Nest Dash, get this Bibarel back into the deck. Um, see if we got like Super Rod off the top or something. We do not. Get Arvin, that's fine. We'll just TM Evo and we will just, you know, select some of these guys to be evolved. Can't evolve the uh, Litten. 
we can evolve the big barrel. Now we have our full board set up. Uh, we had a bit of a slower start, so did they, and we're still a turn behind, but this coming turn, we should be able to just start smacking with an Incineroar. And yeah, if they don't put any Pokemon on the bench, they're not going to be able to kind of um, continue to attack, continue to get things going here. Here comes a Pokegear, which is going to allow them to um, get a supporter out of the top of their deck. Explorer's Guidance is what they're looking for, which is going to be really good. They got to discard some more Ancient cards to start ramping their damage. We have Litten. We also have access to our Counter Catcher because we are prized behind. So if they opt to put down another Dunsparce or something, we can just bring that up with our Counter Catcher, KO it. Artisan's pretty good for us too because it'll let us start establishing our board even, you know, just getting things a little bit bigger and better over here. We have an insanely strong uh, hand right now of nothing. And that's probably, we would rather have it be that way because we want to, um, we want to power up our Litten a lot more. There's another Dark Energy, and they're just going to be swinging with Roaring Moon, it looks like. Now, it might be tough to start getting some attacks off, because we're going to need to start powering up this Litten. They have enough to KO our good pal Relicanth, which is a shame. Uh, but if we can find our Neo Upper Energy, which I will check for now with Artisan, if we can find that, we can be in a good spot. We get Mela too, which is really, really solid to accelerate more energy into play. I want to start by taking a look with the Artisan, see what we have access to. I think I'll thin another Litten out of the deck. Uh, for now, we have two rare candies. We have the Neo Upper, so we have a lot of possibilities here. Or if we find another Fire Energy, they have one benched Pokemon. Well, so we need to find the Neo Upper and the, like and use Mela in order to get the attack off here. So I think this is like not too bad. We'll start off with the Mela, and we'll just draw a bunch of cards here. Ultra Ball Rare Candy is really really good. Now all we need to do, we can Ultra Ball. Super Rod's important to keep. But I think we can get rid of Luminion and get rid of a rare candy. Um, we'll throw the Incineroar into play. That way, if they hit into us, things will be a little bit more difficult for them. So we'll get that guy going. We do need to find the Neo Upper Energy to pull off the attack this turn. Um, and I'm thinking I'll save a Super Rod, not super necessary. Or actually, maybe it is. Maybe I do want a Super Rod here. No, maybe I want to get Toracat. I want to get all three of these guys back because they're all important pieces and important players here. So now we can start with the first big barrel, which has a lot of draw power. Neo Upper Energy, welcome to the party. So now this Incineroar is fully powered up, fully ready to go. We'll start with the Nestash, shuffle this to the bottom of the deck, get ourselves another Fire Energy is good for next turn, but we really want to find the Toracat here so we can pr get easily powered up. And this Ultra Ball, it's a bit tough. I don't see this Incineroar getting knocked out anytime soon. So we'll just Blaze Blast for 240, knock out our opponent's Pokemon, and we get to take uh, first, our first prize card. We still have Counter Catcher active, which is very important to keep in mind. Now, I think that's one of the benefits of Neo Upper Energy in a list like this. For example, we can do these plays. One of Incineroar's people that are saying, oh, Incineroar isn't as good because you can't, like if people just don't bench any Pokemon, you're gonna have a tough time getting set up. But that's actually not true. Neo Upper Energy and Mela allow you to do that especially with the powerful, powerful draw engine of the barrel. It's really just easy to kind of get set up and ex overextend your resources when you need to. They're gonna penny over here and just go into this Roaring Moon on the bench, um, bring it into the active. They gotta bench another Pokemon here or else they're just not going to be able to uh, survive the next turn as long as we have an energy. And that's what they're debating. They're like, do I call the bluff? They do try and call our bluff, but that's okay. We just fully power up this Incineroar, right? That's two. 3-4, I think we just need one more to attack, we do. So we just win the game here by calling their by them calling our bluff and they say, oh yeah, you don't have it, we just have it. Um, yeah, seems like uh, they had a bit of a tough go. I definitely would have played that really differently if I were them. Um, I would have started to power up a Gouging Fire, not for Gouging Fire, Roar Moon EX, if they had all those Dark Patch, I think I would have gone and started to do that. Um, not to opt to take the first KO, S focus on your setup a little bit more. But yeah, I think pretty solid showing of we got set up really easily, even though they knocked out our only Litten in play. Let that sink in. So what do you think of my Incineroar EX deck? This deck is a ton of fun to play and actually pretty strong. I think that it's kind of underrated right now. It's not, you know, I don't think it's like better than Charizard. Charizard works so well for a number of different reasons, but I actually do think that Incineroar is better than Charizard at certain things. Um, it's got a really high damage attack. It can be very, very aggressive. That's why we play those three bosses as well. You can really just get on in there. You can go to a fully single price board state, which can save you and win you games. The only thing is I really think this deck needs a collapse stadium. 
If I were to make any change right now, cut the Mangu base and put a collapsed stadium in, and you will have a much better time. Luminion can lose you games as well as win you games. It's really a double-edged sword in that regard, which is the same case in Charizard, the same case in other decks. But with all that said and done, thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and comment down below what do you think of this deck? What do you like? What do you dislike? What would you keep? And what would you change about it? And subscribe to the Hitmon Channel channel. I'm posting multiple Pokemon trading card game videos every single week. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Hitmon Channing. Oh.